I don't know that a mean situation could have gotten more embarrassing. Or if indeed that is more embarrassing. But you should know that a detail that was left out of yesterday's embarrassment for Amin, and he was embarrassed. He will come on today and try to defend himself, I suppose. But his embarrassment was real. He's usually like, hey, everything for content. But he scrambled for a while there and realized, well, they caught me researching porn during the live YouTube stream. And I guess he's going to lean into it. Where'd you leave it with him? Because there was a flash of panic. I couldn't get a hold of him. He was uh, he was deeply embarrassed. He was saying it's the low point of his career to be doing a YouTube broadcast and discover porn all of a sudden on his computer. He had not he had failed to close one of the tabs. And it wasn't just him. It was Kevin O'Connor of The Ringer also uh, witnessed this and was ashamed for him. And could maybe have been Steve Kerr. Uh, so... I texted him yesterday to confirm that he wanted to come on with us, and I honestly didn't know what to say. So I just said, are you still good to come on at 11 tomorrow? And he said yes, but I didn't know what else to, like, do I say I'm sorry because we sunk into it on the show? Do I say I'm sorry because it happened? I do not have the emotional intelligence to handle the follow-up w- on that. Whittingham was really struggling yesterday between... Feeling a deep empathy and shame on behalf of Amin, but also he woke up several times yesterday laughing at him as well. Uh, You're torn between the two feelings of your friend is hurting, but also it's funny that he's hurting. The way that he's hurting is funny. I was attempting to take a nap yesterday, and I couldn't because I was just laughing. (laughs) <laughs> I would just I would stop laughing and then I was reminded of what happened and then I just kept laughing. I was incapable of falling asleep. I'm actually really tired this morning because I couldn't fall asleep from laughing. Again, not making it up as well. The research uh did reveal a uh, little person porn. I wanted to, because this is the local hour. I wanted to get into not just what is happening with the NCAA and, of course, the University of Miami, the most predictable thing. In a wild, wild west with no rules, Miami is going to be breaking rules when there are no rules. Miami can't even abide by the rules when there are no rules because people are going to be coming after Miami even in a place with no rules. We'll get to that in a second. But before we do so, How is it not a bigger story locally that it appears that Tom Brady has not denied, could very easily just deny, has not denied when asked directly about the idea of being the quarterback for the Dolphins and a deal with Sean Payton being in place, and now Dave Hyde reporting that Sean Payton was going to come in at a Belichick salary of five years, $20 million a year, $100 $100 million. How is this not a giant story? Does ESPN have to make it a giant story for it to be a giant story? I thought we loved the transaction, and the almost transactions are as interesting to us as the actual transactions. And this seems to be a confirmed almost. You mentioned why is it not a bigger local story. I'm confused by that, but I'm mostly confused why it's not a bigger national story because you essentially have a confirmation directly from Tom Brady. No, Not even denials. He kind of... Kind of talked around confirming that story. He was asked about the Dolphins specifically, and he said, I had a lot of conversations with a lot of people about what I'm going to be doing after football. It was there teed up for him. You want to knock it down? You could just knock it down. You could say, none of that is true. Reports are false. And then you throw murkiness into the water. But he's not doing that. He's not confirming it, but he's not denying it. And what's weird is people are hitting the original reporters, Ben Bolin, uh, Mike Florio, with a whole bunch of fake news. People just don't want to believe this is an actual news item. This actually ha- happened, and you have confirmations along the way. You have stellar reporting done, and you don't have a single person debunking it. Not another media entity, not any of the parties. There, there has not been a single denial at this point from anyone. That's a confirmation in this industry. It's very easy to knock these things down. People, if you look at the, the Twitter mentions of Mike Florio or Ben Bolin, anytime someone talks about this, the, the vitriol that they get in their mentions that this is flatly untrue is puzzling. To I me. don't I, I want to explore that portion of it because I don't know that I've ever seen what's presently happening with this story. You've got 
the most famous winner in American sports, a guy who has no precedent age-wise for the success that he has, no one conquers the way he has in sports, and it would appear that he was making a power play for ownership of the Dolphins while quarterbacking the team and bringing in his own coach. And now Bruce Arian says that if Tom Brady had not unretired, he'd still be coaching that team. Bruce Arian says, not for the reasons that you think, he says, because I wouldn't have left a mess to uh, a mess without Brady to somebody else. But if Brady was going to be the quarterback, Arians wasn't going to be the coach. And in the middle of that, Brady looks like he's retiring in an announcement that does not thank New England and Boston. Why? Ben Volan of the Boston Globe says it's because it wasn't meant as a retirement. It was meant as goodbye to only the Buccaneers. It was all set in motion not to be a retirement that had to be a retirement once the Brian Flores lawsuit leaks. Is this too complicated? Is it? Are there too many details here that make it so that people want to believe? This is the part that's weirdest to me is this. They want to believe that the outlandish is not true. I would think that the outlandish, you'd want to believe it's true, that it's so ridiculous and seems to be so, so that you would want to believe that. And I'm puzzled, genuinely puzzled by the number of people saying, Florio, Volan, you're full of shit. This story's not true. Why do you keep selling it as there are no denials? I don't know if they're all Bucks fans and they want it to not be true. They, they they don't want to believe that Tom Brady was willingly ready to leave, that if he were ready to leave, that it would only be because he wanted to retire. I, I am a little puzzled why ESPN hasn't done more of, of this. You want to ask, like, why is it not a bigger story? ESPN Is that really what it takes, yeah, though? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I really do think so. Before Monday Night Football, Adam Schefter reporting on something, I, I do think that carries a lot of weight. He's been, he's been really quiet on this. Granted, he initially reported the, the retirement that wasn't a retirement, so I don't know if he feels compromised by that because if Ben Volan's reporting is accurate, that means that Darlington and Adam Schefter were kind of pawns in this whole retirement thing, even though they, they jumped the gun on that. I am very confused as to why ESPN um, hasn't done more with this. Granted, it's not their own reporting, but that hasn't stopped ESPN in the past. They piggyback on other people's reports all the time. There, haven't been a there hasn't been a denial, and now Tom Brady has spoken, taken to a microphone, and not denied it. The fact that there isn't any ESPN national reporting on this is truly confusing to me. Are correct conspiracies less interesting <laughs> by I, their nature? I, like, I, when you prove a conspiracy to be true, do you then go, okay, well, I guess that was true. And then you move on to the one, like, I think real conspiracy theorists are trying to find things that no one will ever talk about, that aren't reported on. You're just missing out. But I think because this one is like, yeah, it happened. Like, okay, well, that's cool. On to the next. Whittingham, I think you might be on to something. I think if it's something I can have discreetly whispered on the shadowy web with my QAnon friends, and it can always be a forbidden taboo that is not confirmed or denied, but is my secret never reported by the mainstream, makes it a cooler conspiracy, makes it mine. Once you make it uncool, the conspiracy becomes uncool once Volan and Florio are involved, and now our show is mainstreaming it, and people are like, ah, okay, so what? Bigfoot exists. What's your point? It was better when I couldn't prove it. Now I got Volan reporting it. I got Pro Football Talk reporting it. The Levitard Show won't shut up about it. Eh, I'm not so interested in the Chupacabra anymore now that I know it's around all the time. I will say, you know, I know that ESPN gives a lot of validation to things, but those are fairly big outlets that are talking about this, right? Like NBC is a league partner. I know we can talk about ESPN's conflicts as a league partner, but... NBC is in some ways more of a league partner in that they don't re they aren't really known for having an NFL journalistic arm outside of their NFL coverage. It's really just pro football talk that exists. So I, I do think that 
I th- it comes down to, in some ways, like the Q rating of these two reporters, as Mike mentioned, the, the mentions for these two guys, I feel bad for them. And because they go, even like Dolphins fans, who in theory, like if you're a Dolphins fan, and I said to you, do you want Sean Payton and Tom Brady? I'd be like, hell yeah, I want Sean Payton and Tom Brady. Like, I'd, I'd rather have another season of Tua? Get out of here. Like, you'd rather have Tom Brady than Tua. And yet, for some reason, in the mentions, it's like, no, 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 our, our organization would never do this. This is a cockamamie idea. And I just, I can't fathom being a Dolphins fan and, like, not being like, oh, shit, we missed out on Sean Payton and Tom Brady. Like, that could have been a Super Bowl this season. Jessica, you've been stifling a yawn for 11 minutes, 11 full minutes, where no one knows you're here and you're... Uh, you're covering your face because you're this bored by Tom Brady talk. If this was a Steelers story. No, Dan, because you started with the the whole porn thing, and I was just thinking about how much I miss working with women. That's a good point. Because Amin got stuck in the shame of porn? It's a very little person porn, as your first words. It's very morning zoo. And this is why we've always desperately needed women in the workplace. It's just not not a good start to the morning it's like, what are you shock jock you should don't you have a boomerang sound in there like come on what are we doing you got a soundboard i do have a soundboard but i, th- I think i took it out of the way so we can have a, kitchen, work a microphone all. in the kitchen oh man yeah i had a soundboard i lost my soundboard i wasn't trying to do wacky hijinks i was telling people an update in the news story that carried yesterday's show which is what is not funny about Amin accidentally in front of a colleague uh, opening a tab while doing a live broadcast to reveal on his computer his private shame? What's not funny about that? It's sports media in a nutshell. Five dudes in Zoom screens laughing about porn. Like, that is, if I could sum up my years in sports media, it is that. Accident or not, like, that sums it up. I right don't believe there. that they were laughing at porn. I believe that they were laughing at Amin's shame. I believe there's a distinction. Now he's mansplaining. He's a it's a <laughs> rationalization oh. I'm making to forgive uh, forgive what? The behavior that's funny? I'm not going to I'm not you're not going to have me believe that Amin getting caught in that situation is not funny. I didn't say it wasn't funny. Just it really in a nutshell what it is like to be a woman working in sports. How about the Brady story? I agree with Whittingham. I don't I don't think it's interesting because it's it didn't happen. Like it it would have been crazy if it happened. It didn't happen because Brian Flores blew up the Dolphins. The, but the, organization. Re- the reason that didn't it the reason it didn't happen almost to me makes it yet more newsworthy. The fact that it didn't happen only because You've got an unprecedented lawsuit filed by a coach who's saying your organization is racist. It's a story that's too crazy to be true. It is, but it's like a, f- a f- almost thing that almost happened. It didn't actually happen. So, like, there's not that much to talk about, I guess. It, it would have been crazy. I- the thought of it now is like, wow, like, we knew something weird was happening when he made the retirement announcement you- because Schefter was adamant about one thing, and then Tom Brady put out the tweet, and he didn't mention the Patriots. Like, it, it seemed weird at the time, and this does explain why it was actually weird, and all of our instincts were right. It was super weird. But it didn't happen, so it's like, oh, well, this crazy thing almost happened, but it didn't. Because of that, are you guys of the belief, if I were to do some reporting, Dave Hyde did some reporting, the offer on the table to Sean Payton was $100 million for five years. If I were to do additional reporting that confirmed the almost... Okay, that's crazy. That is way too much money for Sean Payton. <laughs> what are you doing? A hundred million dollars? He's won one Super Bowl. And it was like 15 years ago. I'm surprised that more coaches in the NFL don't get $20 million a year. Because there's no cap to their salaries. It's the one area where you can just go to Bill Belichick and be like, I will pay you $50 million a year. It means nothing to me. Go with me. Like... I'm really surprised an NFL owner hasn't tried to do that. Just quadruple some successful coach's salary because what difference does it make to him? We still have no idea what Nick uh, Bill uh, Belichick actually makes, too. Yeah. They don't actually report these details. They don't put it out there. In the Peyton story, what I saw reported in the Peyton story is that Sean Peyton would become the second highest paid coach behind Belichick. I guess people are now saying that Belichick does make $20 million 
a year. It's not something I'd seen reported before this. This would make coaching salaries go up. But Jessica, and you be on the dollars of the hundred million. If I were to be able to do the reporting that confirms the deal was in place to get rid of Tua and Tom Brady was coming with Sean Payton. Is ESPN then forced to report it? If it is like, what do I need to do to this story well, to make the almost something that echoes? Well, I think Brady said enough to kind of confirm to savvy people that the, the story was accurate. Yeah. Number one, there was no denial. Number two, he kind of talked around confirming it. We haven't really heard from Sean Payne on this, and he's media friendly, and he doesn't actually have to do any press. I felt obligation. like he denied it. I felt he he said some things that denied it stronger than it, it was stronger than what Brady said. I actually I'm getting this feeling with the Deshaun Watson thing too. Adam Schefter carries so much weight. He is the national NFL reporter. He has the most followers. Yes, he's ESPN, but he he's the guy. He's stayed away from this story. He was in on it early on, was right while kind of being wrong, but was right maybe too early, and it all ended up being just a facade anyways. He's set, sat this one out. Maybe it's because of that. But he also hasn't been aggressively reporting the Deshaun Watson details too, and it's just curious to me. Like, why is the single biggest NFL reporter, the guy that has more sources than anybody, the guy that breaks – People join in the practice squad. Why is he staying away from these two massive NFL stories? I don't understand it. He hasn't stayed away from the Watson story, though. He has tweeted some things about it that seem like they're coming straight from Deshaun Watson's agent, including I think he retweeted Deshaun Watson's agent yes. at one point. Well, thank you for correcting me. He has stayed away from it since then. Since he very publicly stepped in it. He stepped in it by saying, this is why, after the grand jury indictment didn't come down, this is why Deshaun Watson always wanted uh, the truth to come out because he thought the truth was on his side, blah, blah, blah. Taking an indictment, uh, the withdrawal, or the inability of prosecutors to bring an indictment as innocence. And that's where it sounded like he was a PR piece for Deshaun Watson and his agent. Maybe because of the context we just applied, he feels compromised a little bit by both stories, but still that's kind of like a weird excuse. I, I don't, I genuinely don't understand why they're staying away from it. People within ESPN are very confused why it's not. Think about what we see on, on first take the echo chamber that is on first take. They just broke down whether or not, uh, it's a problem that Anthony Davis hasn't shot since April. This is fodder for days. This is good content. This is the NFL. It is something that you could stand up your daytime programming around, and they just don't want to get into it. No one sent the memo to me that Schefter's the one who gets to decide these things. If right now there is a story, oh, you'd never believe this, Russell Westbrook was almost traded to blank. They would not not discuss it. They wouldn't not discuss, excuse the double negative, uh, the the transaction almost happened. It's not the almost that's keeping it from being reported. I think an almost that can then become Westbrook will at a later date do that. If people thought it was still in play that Peyton and Brady could come here next year, I think that you would then get that story. Like they would, they discuss almost all the time all over the news. And nobody, when did, when did Schefter become in charge of all of this? We, we, we did talk about it a little bit while it was happening, but it was in retrospect, a very short period of time where it felt like it was in play for the Dolphins. And by the time you started fantasy booking what might happen, the reports were that it was all over and blown up, um, which is why, uh, which is probably how something that massive. Uh, the coup of taking Tom Brady away from the, the Bucks and Sean Payton away from the Saints and tying in ownership and all this very complicated minutia that goes into that deal probably had to operate in the shadows. And if it didn't happen right then in that very tight window, obviously it wasn't going to happen at all. Not to get too inside baseball on ESPN uh, properties and coverage, but if you get all your information from Mina, Bomani, and Pablo, like I basically do, they did actually talk about it a fair amount. And actually on Monday... Pablo had an episode of the ESPN Daily with Tuanon himself yeah. and Marcel Louis Jacques, who's the uh, NFL reporter for the Dolphins. And they, they did talk about it a fair amount. And it was a, a great episode. 
every time I hear Mina talking about this, she's doing the same thing that we're doing. Yeah, which her is, and Bohani why are, why, were like, why, why, why aren't we talking what, about what's this? What's happening here? This is very weird. And I guess it's kind of to your point, like the Heat aren't getting any any coverage yet. The biggest podcast in America is talking about them. Yeah. It's like to a degree, we are paying attention to it. You're a, a leader in the industry. You are shining a light on it. But it's, it's not like leading Sports Center. I, I get what weird. you mean. Which yeah, is what why, like most. Why is it lay, so important to me that lay people watch? Why is it so important to me that it's on Sports Center, that it's on NFL Live, that it's more that it's people being probably listen to you know Bomani's podcast than the Daily Sports Center? I don't know about that. I just made that up. But anyways, I think one of the interesting things about you did it make that up. is that That's not this is in a any example way. of salary cap circumvention that Tom Brady was giving. Like he was given some uh, ownership stake after he retired, which seems like it would have been. I don't know. I don't know how the yet NFL more intrigue litigated for it. that, but yeah. it is intriguing. And I think it's maybe the first time that we are seeing something like this happen, and it definitely won't be the last. I think this is going to be a topic for a while. And Tom Brady and the Dolphins are the first first people to kind of put it out there. On on that note, do you think it's problematic that Anthony Davis hasn't shot a basketball since April fifth? And yeah, also on long time. on Get Up this morning, the main talking point is what are the storylines to watch for in Ravens minicamp? Wow. Dan, your thoughts? Kyle Hamilton. Is Lamar Jackson unhappy because he's lost Hollywood Brown and he he seemed to be uh, hurt about that? I uh, the part that I found most interesting about what it is that you guys are talking about here, and I'm not sure anyone in the audience cares about this, but if you didn't send me the memo that Adam Schefter is now in charge of what gets to me big news and isn't big news, and Adam Schefter uh, got a big giant deal immediately having a scandal in which he was writing to Bruce Allen, calling him Mr. Editor, a guy who was high up with the Washington football team, a guy at the center of the Gruden stuff and the leaked emails that made Gruden a pretty prominent face and voice for the league, lose his job, a job that paid him as much as this contract that Sean Payton would have gotten. Anyone in our audience have any objection to the idea that if Schefter gets to be the decider on this and he's reaching out to an executive with Washington and calling him Mr. Editor, the Washington franchise really needs some vigorous reporting it's not getting right now, doesn't it? Like, I mean, the Senate, the, you've got... I mean, it's got a fair amount of reporting. Congressional investigation yeah. is not nothing. Yeah, and the local reporters have done a pretty good job in exposing... There's so many scandals on that franchise. Man, that franchise has had an off season. I'm saying why several off seasons. Why isn't that in your news stream in a way like you say locally it's being covered and you say yes of course congressional hearings but do, wouldn't you think I remember steroid hearings congressional hearings those used to be on television all day when there were congressional hearings into sports were that scandal immune now that uh, congressional hearings into the was the, there a, a hearing on the commies yet I don't think they had a hearing I think they're just still multiple federal agencies investigating maybe we'll get a hearing there's at been some testimony point. Yeah. there's hearings been. on the other commies. <laughs> yeah one at a time i suppose right and when it comes to washington commander's coverage i'm going to say properly rated I, I think there there's been enough coverage i guess and there's certainly more if you if you'd like to find it the brady the brady thing is odd can we fry the ncaa now go ahead of course miami's first of, of course we're the first inquiry and by the way they've got nothing no one is worried. This is just standard protocol as they try to find a light switch in the dark. And that's all that's coming of this. But message sent. Jess, I told you. They were going to seize at the very first opportunity to make Miami the face of this. Miami's not the only one doing NIL. Granted, Miami is a very public booster. But I told yes, you. Yes, that's why. That That is why. It's not just the Miami brand name. It is the very public booster, I think. I think it was like the Twitter spaces that happened. I think it was... All of the smoke around it, like his SPAC or whatever. I mean, I don't even know if that's yeah. it. I don't even know if that's NCAA Nick knows Saban what that took means. To a, but Nick Saban took to a microphone and said, "Our quarterback is making a million dollars." I think the <laughs> I think the wheels were already in motion from how loud the Miami boosters were in the off season, and, and the ba the basketball player. I think that was another thing that well, caused the little, Nigel Pack thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah ba basically, saying John Rue's coming out and tweeting that we have a basketball player under contract is slightly different than some of the other things that have happened in college basketball. Yeah, well, I've told you, John Ruiz needs to get the timing down on these things. You announce first, and then maybe a couple hours later, hey, I Why it, does he I, have to I, be I, so I, public? I, I, That's what I don't he get. He wants to be in charge of... Man, uh, uh, Winningham, this is not an act of altruism for this person. This person... 
wants to just, be. Just so you know, Uncle Johnny would push back on that. He's helping the kids. Okay. In in what in what universe is this not is this Are you not a like spokesperson? I mean, come on, come like on, Uncle Johnny, Mr. Editor, such a public figure. You like, know, there was that even is one Mr. time I even saw like one video where he's like, "I'm going to help these kids speak." Well, I'm like, "Oh Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, just Christ please, man, Jesus. just please stop." Right. Yeah, he's front facing, but it is. It is no surprise that Miami would be super boisterous about that, but that's not the reason why the NCAA is going at Miami first. They're, they're going at Miami first because it's just, that's a headline. It's, uh, if, if NIL is going wild, surely it's those wild guys in Miami doing it. And it's just, it, they're trying to do something. There's no there there. And I will say that, that the NCAA really has to tread quite lightly when it comes to NIL because this story ends with them not mattering. But you already know it, Mike. Standard protocol. Yeah. Go to Miami first. Always. It's not I just go, go on vacation. Too. Uh, it's not just go to Miami. Bad time first, of year so. to be here, though. <laughs> Tbh. It's been like 110 <laughs> degrees the last few days. It's about it's to get worse. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's 100 degrees everywhere in the country right now. That's fair, but yeah. it's also 100 percent humidity. It's about to get worse. If you're complaining now, wait till uh, the next three months. It uh, was 85 uh, degrees last night <laughs> when the sun was down. Yes. It was eight, my car said it was 85 degrees out. It was hotter at night than it was in New York during the day while everyone's complaining. I'm like, I'm wearing a blazer. It is, <laughs> it is Satan's asshole out here. Mike, you sound, though, in talking about, as we've talked about this a lot over the years, uh, Miami does have a persecution complex, and Miami is also persecuted. Yes, Miami would be first, but it is not surprising that the top-end, loudest, cartoonish version of this exists in a brown billionaire who wants to be very much seen as running the organization, running the school in a way that's professional, and got out there doing some things like saying, I've got a contract, $400,000 for a college basketball player. You don't see anybody else doing that. It's not, it's not that brazen, and the NCAA will conduct an investigation under the guise of simply do us the courtesy please of not being quite that brazen but it's not it's not them doing that it's it's them cloud chasing a little bit and the the damage is done it doesn't matter that i'm telling you that miami is not worried there is nothing here they were asking standard questions miami knows through its compliance protocols that they are fine in this it's nothing you're not close to singing like a canary no, you no, I'm not. No, NCAA, I am. You said that you, if you said you threatened. You yeah, th you no, I will. I, we're not there yet, but it's just obvious what, what's trying to happen because it doesn't matter. You got your logo, you got the U logo, you got NIL scandal, and the narrative's already gone out of control. And they got what, what they tried to accomplish. And I know that the wheels were in motion to this prior to Nick Saban speaking, but this is why Nick Saban feels so comfortable in just asking the NCAA to do his bidding. Because he knows that they're going to snoop around the outside of the good old boy network to, to the people, to the big cities, those city slickers that don't belong here in, in the heart, heartland of college football, USC. They live in Indianapolis. Yeah, no, they protect the, the small towns. It's a mutually beneficial thing. You've always heard my theory about like why the biggest like pay-for-play scandals are always in major cities. Look what it took and how long it took for Penn State to actually get the national spotlight that, that it got. You look at the history of college football, you see SMU, Miami, USC. What do all those cities have uh, in common? They were big-time college football programs operating in a big-time metropolis that didn't have an entire economy revolving around their success. It's laugh-out-loud funny that the University of Miami, while building a $100 million facility, just stole somebody from the Dolphins to run their football ops. It just That does not happen very often. Once upon a time, it was reported that the University of Miami was trying to steal head coach Dave Wanstead and give him like a 10 or 20 year contract at the University of Miami. I'm sure Wanstead regrets. It was some ridiculous 20 year it contract. Was, it was some absurd contract that gave to pull him yeah. away from Can the Can you Dolphins. imagine if the Hurricanes were still trying to pay Dave Wanstead? <laughs> <laughs> that would be unbelievable. Here. It, I, I don't remember whether it was. You have a fake Dave Wanstead? <laughs> you do? What's wrong with getting Wani down here? <laughs> It's not bad. <laughs> when did you get a Wani? The Pittsburgh accent? The Pittsburgh a little thing. Pittsburgh accent. Yeah. 
When does that happen, Mike? That doesn't happen very often. They got, I don't even know what the position uh, was, like just head of football ops. I haven't really asked around. I don't know what that person's job security was like at the Dolphins, but Miami, Miami, the Miami Hurricane athletic program is legitimately getting into the game. You saw it with the, the head coach, the head coach hire, the assistant coach hires. They poached the top assistant in the nation away from Michigan. Like they're, they're very legit about this. I, I will say John Ruiz is a name that we know because it's out there. And while he's the only front-facing singular booster, I think with national notoriety, I mean, there are actual boosters like Pickens and, and Bill Knight that should be talked about like this, but they're for whatever reason, they're not. They're kind of grandfathered in. It's okay when they again, do it. Mike, again, Phil Knight is not saying, I just signed a college basketball player right. from Kansas State for $400,000. Right, he's... Which is the problem there because so, wait, they're not spending more money. The the Pancake Factory in Texas, the, the what Texas A and M has done, what Tennessee has done. When Nick Saban comes out the gate saying my quarterback got a million dollars, like no one else is, no one else is saying that. It's more of a problem. Yes, you have a, a front facing individual, whereas everyone else is kind of operating in the shadows. These there are these conglomerates, these NIL collectives. Or there are these people that don't even do NIL. When Jimbo Fisher says, we're getting all these people and only one of them has an NIL deal, that's a bigger red flag than what John Ruiz is doing. Well, because at least he's using NIL the way that it's meant to be. Like, I know all the athletes that he has under contract, and they take to social media, and they're actually doing the work for the for the pay. I don't know how, uh, if I don't, if well, I do know how, but... If you're just doing that, if you're taking it at surface value, how is Texas A&M competing in an NIL market if they're only signing one player to NIL deals? Ask yourself that question. They're, if anyone's broaching actual rules, then it would be people that aren't announcing NIL deals in this in this modern age. What you're saying, though, is that he should just act richer. Like, stop tweeting. Yeah. Get someone to do all your PR for you. Just act rich, like Phil Knight. No, but he Phil wants Knight the attention. This is I, the point that I I'm making, it, Uncle, as he calls him, whatever he calls him, Uncle Uncle Johnny. Uncle Johnny. I think you're probably right, Dan. I think he probably wants people to know that he's the face of this of this booster network or whatever you want to call it. But I think Mike is saying he just needs to act a little richer. Like you know, yes. you got a bajillion dollars now from your company going public. Hire someone Maybe. to do all your Maybe. PR. Well, yeah. he has he has undoubtedly made money off of the SPAC, right? Yeah. And his investors yes. have made money off no, he, of it. He, he is a billionaire. That That is, yeah. that is for you real. Can, like you can question dollars. what the, regula the SEC regulations about doing this type of business. The SEC is apparently looking into this now after years of people getting very wealthy yeah. off of SPACs. Which, which should be noted, that's kind of standard protocol anytime a SPAC goes public. I thought you were going to say standard protocol anytime a Miami person well, that should gets be. rich off yeah, of a SPAC. It's double, double stamp it. Yeah. Uh, double stamp. It's very hard to get kicked out of the billionaires club once you get in. It's very difficult, especially when you don't have generational. Right, because you just invent, you just yeah. invest in other people's companies, and then they go public, and yeah. then you, you know, redeem your shares, and then the company maybe doesn't exist in five years, but no one asks any questions because you're rich and you have a house on Star Island. Precisely. But anyways, I mean, that's not what I'm saying is going on here. All I'm saying is that Mike seems to think you guys are you guys aren't going to come into an agreement on this because you think he wants the attention and Mike thinks he needs to slow his roll a little bit. Oh, but I know he wants the attention. Remember the first time I reported on John Ruiz when he was like he was a name that was circulating around the AD stuff. I said he just wants to be recognized as the guy that right. brought Miami back. And Miami's in a difficult position because they don't want to dissuade someone from actually helping the program. John Ruiz is helping. But everyone knows who Phil Knight is, right? Because he, he made Nike. He's a famous person. I mean... Just think of ways to make John Ruiz popular and famous without attaching his name to all these athletes. He, but Maybe he doesn't want it that him. way. He doesn't. If you Published tell by Metal Arc Media, if you told John Ruiz right now that Mike he is could, Mr. Editor, he could help the University of Miami, but no one will know to credit him. I don't think he wants to do it. I went to a University of Miami basketball game, and it was a fascinating dynamic because around me was a booster that I know for a fact helps the University of Miami more goes totally unrecognized. And this was at the start of John Ruiz uh, doing the stuff on social media. John Ruiz walks by. Absolute rock star. And the optics to him matter, and it's working, and he's held up by a segment of the, the, the UM fan base that thinks of him as a savior, that he's kind of positioned himself to be. Look at the Miami basketball program. Now has two top 15 players in the country. Watch those Nigel Pack highlights. I implore you. The Miami basketball program overnight is getting good. And the and the football program is too. And John Ruiz has kind of positioned himself 
as the face of this seed change, and it was very smart optics. But at the same time, he needs to be way more careful than he's being. And the baseball program was so close, Dan. But he, I think what Mike is proposing <laughs> is a conspiracy theory. Yeah, John yeah. Ruiz is just a smokescreen. There's actually someone way bigger calling the shots, and this, he's actually doing his part. He's a pawn. He's a distraction. He's going to take all the heat from the NCAA. He's going. Out, what he gets out of this is being the public face of Miami athletics, but he's not actually funding this operation. There's some other billionaire, Mike is saying, who's behind the scenes, who's actually pulling the strings here with the athletic department. That's not what he was recruits. saying. He just said there was I somebody who was... I'm saying, I'm reading between the lines, I'm smelling a conspiracy theory. You don't want to talk about the Tom Brady conspiracy theory. We're talking about this one instead. John Ruiz, I now do not think is actually calling any shots here. I think he's a smokescreen. Well, you're actually subscribed to my school of thought. Well, yes, he might be a smokescreen for Miami. He's, my problem is he's become a smokescreen for the entire NIL system because Texas A&M is also using John Ruiz as a meat shield. <laughs> Alabama is also using John Ruiz as a meat shield. He is a convenient pawn. He is a convenient fall guy, which is why I think he needs to be a little bit more careful with it. He met with the NCAA. He had the best possible quotes that you could imagine coming out of it. I'm not worried. The NCAA here should be the ones that are worried because all these programs have realized they don't need this headache. And the NCAA is going to lose its marquee programs eventually. I'm not even telling you that there's a way to stop it, but I am telling you there's a way to slow it. And it's not by knocking on doors down here. The thing that I don't, and maybe this is a myopia that I don't follow college football enough, is there another John Ruiz character somewhere out there in Ole Miss Twitter that I'm unaware of? Because the brazen the brazenness of saying to a guy who is considering transferring Isaiah Wong from the University of Miami men's basketball team, you are under contract. You signed a deal. You're playing for the University I of Miami. I don't renegotiate. Correct. And so like, I don't think that that particular brazenness has been out there in other places, even in the world of famous boosters. We know that Phil Knight is a big booster of the University of Oregon. We know that he's maybe called plays from his luxury box at Autzen Stadium, but we don't know of like him <laughs> get, going on Twitter and t talking about if this running back leaves the football program, I'm going to revoke his Nike status. Maybe he does that stuff in private, but the public, the, the, the publicity of it, the public nature of it is I think why it's gathering attention. Like we know T Boone Pickens, which is a great name yeah, for, a, yeah. for a booster of this story. It's just an great. unbelievable it's name. It's what I think of. Honest to God, you say booster, I say Pickens. Like, yeah. It, no, for me, it's T. Boone more than Pickens. Well, it's all he's, of it. For me, he's T. Boone. It's all of it. Yeah, yeah. your first name is a letter in the booster realm. That's like a whole nother level. We know that he does this, though, but like, I don't hear from T. Boone Pickens every day about what's going on with T. Boone Pickens' work at Oklahoma State. I hear about John Ruiz. I love that you've never met another T. Boone. He's the only T. Boone you've known. It's the only reference point, the lighthouse landmark for T. Boones. When you when you talk about brazenness, Witty, to me, brazenness yeah. is moving a, a family from Miami-Dade County to Tuscaloosa, and all of a sudden they have a six-figure job and a career. Like, wow, your company just relocated you to Tuscaloosa. Who's your son? Oh, that to me is brazen. That to me is kind of there. But you need a billionaire. You need the, the the flashiness of new Miami money to to be talked about by Colin Cowherd. There's a lot of brazen moves. Uh, they're, they aren't shy about the cars they drive in Tuscaloosa. They aren't shy about how they operate in Georgia. They're not shy about the, the pancake factory in Texas. It's just you have a singular face, and they're just waiting to pick you off. And it's why you have to be careful because not only because you're a singular face, but you're a Miami face. And the NCAA has already showed you. They'll jump at the chance of making an example out of you. The man's name is Thomas. Call yourself Tom. <laughs> T. Get out of here. Yeah, if, if your name is T. Boone Pickens, it has to be like Theodore or something like that. Yes. It can't he, be he, Thomas. He'd also, be, he, de he died three years ago. That's perhaps why I haven't heard of his <laughs> NIL business. He'd, oh be, <laughs> he'd be cooler as J. Ruiz, I believe, if we called well, him J. Ruiz. Mike, I think one thing that you can't take for granted is that Alabama and Texas A&M and all these other schools that we've mentioned haven't had the slump that Miami's had in the last yeah. 10 years, and they haven't had to announce that they're actually open for business now. And that's something that I think this... Ruiz character has done and has announced to the country, hey, we're, we're, Miami's back. We're open for business. Come down here. I'll pay you through my company for NIL, whatever. Uh, because like Nick Saban's never had to do that. Is this a bit of East Coast bias too? Because I think that USC is getting hit a lot. 
too with some of what Miami's getting. Well, in. because they bought Lin- because they bought uh, Riley uh, uh, what Lincoln Riley uh, Lincoln Riley because they bought him the way that they bought him. Isn't that where well, that's also a similar situation? Which is like, hey, we were doing fine without you guys. You're not just going to come march back into this party. And for programs like USC and, and Miami that can that are operating under a microscope, relatively speaking, comparatively speaking to what they do in the SEC, which is just it is so goddamn brazen i can't even begin to tell you mike you say goddamn brazen but it's still hidden i, well, I like, i'm not just gonna well, come out no, here but, and say no, this player got but, paid but, this but, much but, and this but, is but the bad part it's not on like, twitter not like there's that. a difference mike, between brazenness on twitter mike, you got dj Khaled as a booster who's a billionaire running around as the face of i'm power i'm new money i can buy people and you're saying we're persecuted when he's the loudest most cartoonish and absurd of the boosters well, i'm adhering to the code it's an honor amongst thieves that's why nick saban crossed the line is it's just like you don't say this person is doing that. I'm, I'll say maybe you want to look into it when I'm defensive because they're coming at Miami because I know the game. But Miami can't operate like this. NIL paved the lane where Miami actually has a shot now to give players a decision. To give, hey, do you want to make this money and be in paradise? Or do you want to maybe make a little bit more where they have more resources? But you're in a place called College Station. You live in Starkville. <laughs> yeah. You live in Starkville. I, I mean, you, you have to embrace it, though, Mike. At least the biggest booster from your university isn't saying, hey, come play at Notre Dame. We'll set you up with a nice charity. You can yeah. be their spokesperson, but you don't get to keep the money. The money goes to the charity. I'm not. That's not actually what happened, but you get how like the, the difference is, is stark. <laughs> I, I think I am going to embrace this a little bit, and look, I don't... I understand all the reasons why John Ruiz rubs people the wrong way. I get it. I am self-aware. I also kind of lean into some of that Miami shit, and I'm low-key kind of proud of him. That's an amazing story that he became a billionaire. Whatever, however this ends, fine. But it's an am- that's the American you say, dream. You, you say however this ends, fine, and I see it ending in jail and smelling too much like cologne. <laughs>